now now uh, i am going to display the average weather features according to the city so what i am going to do is i am going to perform group by by the city and i am going to take the mean okay so uh, here it is these are the city names and uh, these are i am taking the five cities in my data set and i am calculating the mean of each and every feature which is available in my data set okay so temperature okay what is the mean this is a mean temperature what is the minimum temperature what mean of the minimum temperature for the barcelona okay this what is the mean of maximum temperature this pressure mean humidity mean all the feature mean i have taken here all the feature means i have taken for respective city so there are five cities in my uh, data set related these are the spanish cities my data set is of spain okay so accordingly these are uh, the cities available i am going to take the mean of all the city for all the features mean for the respective cities next how many null values are there in my df underscore weather okay and how many duplicate values are uh, there okay so uh, there are zero missing values which are available in my data frame this is what i have previously checked also but uh, again i'm as i've done some modifications on my data set i'm just going to check how many duplicates are there how many null values are there in my data set so there are 8601 duplicate rows in my df weather based on all the columns these are the duplicate rows which are available in my df underscore weather based on all the columns okay and uh there are no missing values exactly at present with the df underscore weather but there are 8600 uh, 601 duplicate rows which are available in df underscore weather initially whatever the changes which i did done on my data frame this is what been ha uh, uh, happening so what to be done ahead let's see see then the next thing is uh, there are observations in the energy so what observations which we are going to check for the ener um, uh, energy consider the city df underscore weather city name unique that means all the city names five different cities name will be going to come into the cities okay so number of observation that means how many rows are there 3,000, uh, 35,064 observations are available in my energy column. Now I'm working with the energy. Previously, I did work on the weather, so I did started with the in uh, energy. Meanwhile, I did some work on the weather, and now I'm again back to the energy portion, energy data set. Okay, so here what I'm having, um, uh, this what is the shape of my energy? So, 35,064 observation rows are available in my energy. Okay. uh what are the cities available in my um an uh, en en energy city name but cities are not available in energy cities are available in the weather not in the energy so what i did what i did what are the unique names of the cities available in the weather assign it to the cities and group by perform the group by which we did above here group by group by city name not with respect to the mean not with respect to the mean just perform just perform what group by the city name do you group by the city name and assign it to another variable that is grouped weather and for cities in cities for cities in cities that means for each and every city i'm going to apply for loop and i'm going to print how many observations for each and every city are there for example for valencia uh, in my uh, in my data set in my data set for observations in df weather Weather group weather dot get group format city shape zero and I'm going to print how many observations are related to it. So there are thirty five thousand one hundred forty observations about the city Valencia, and these are respectively the observations related to each and every city which has been available in my data set. So what I did, what I did basically, I first printed what are the number of observations which are present in my weather. data sheet 35064 uh, okay then i performed how many unique names of cities available in my data set for the cities okay five cities are there then i performed group by operation group by operation okay and group by with respect to the city name group by with respect to the city name okay so uh, that will be grouped weather that will be considered as a grouped weather then then i applied a for loop to trace how many observations 
are for particular cities I, for that reason i applied a for loop so for city in cities so there are five cities city in city that means pick one one city each okay and check how many observations are there so here are the respective observations for each and every city which have been available in my data sheet then i need to create weather to and draw the duplicates of the rows in df underscore weather okay just create a new data frame and drop the duplicate rows which are available so what i did df underscore weather reset index reset index ka matlab kya what what do you mean by reset index see initially your index you change your index for the weather i guess um, here you did some operation you change the index you change the index with respect to the time so now your index of the weather was with respect to the time and you need to reset your index that means time will come again into column and your index will start from zero zero one two three four five this is what will be happening so reset index what it do whatever the index was previous that will now come into the column and resetting of the index has been done starting from zero one two three four five six seven eight drop the duplicates okay so if there are duplicates in time and a city name okay just drop them so this will be a new data frame df underscore weather to new data frame okay so i just created new data frame and i also updated my initial data frame with the same thing i did perform both the operations i created i named it as a new data frame also and the same operation i did with my initial data frame also df underscore weather and uh, there is an update okay now i'm going to display the number of rows in each data frame how many number of rows are there so again 35000 observations are there in a df energy df energy 35 observations for valencia madrid and all these things and, and i have dropped and i have dropped duplicates okay after dropping the duplicates these are the observations so all the observations you can see that now perfect 35000 observations of the energy for all they are same 35064 for all the cities so now df energy 35000 and and df weather df weather is also having 35 observations 35000 observations for each and every city okay so you know there was a difference in my df weather i am available with 170000 something something uh, you know uh, observations okay one lakh then i resetted an index and took time okay in time i got uh, for example 35000 something um, was there and then according to the cities i, I dropped the duplicates and then I, I made it perfect that now according to the observations available in the energy and according to the observations available in the weather both the observations are now same 35064 okay for each and every city i am available with the same observations now what I, what can i do um df weather description unique what are the unique values which are present in the weather description okay so I, you can see that sky is clear few clouds scatter clouds broken clouds so these are the unique values which are present in df underscore description in my data set these are the unique values which are present in my data set okay so what i'm going to do and let, let me check what are the unique values available in weather main also in my data set so uh, you know clear clouds rain mist so i have already explained you the weather data set okay and in the these these two columns are present in the at the last weather description and uh, weather main these are present at the last so these are having some categorical value you can see that uh, these are certainly the categories these are all text categories that know oh, what kind of weather is there okay so for weather main also and for weather description also now what to do display all the unique values which are present in the weather id weather id unique values which are present in weather id so obviously weather ID, for example if i do say the sky is clear its id is 800 few clouds its id is 801 scatter clouds its id is 802 so it's been all available in data set itself which is i'm printing here nothing else i'm just printing all of them okay the unique values which are present in weather id okay and then what to do I'm going to define a function which will calculate the R square R2 square for the same column in the two data frames. For the same column in the two data frames, let me calculate the R square. And I have already told you about the R square. R square. Okay. 
and uh, r2 square is basically it's a parameter of uh, it's it's something uh, which will decide whether uh, you know if it is value is going to one then regression is going to fit and it is uh, something less then it's not going to fit okay so what 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 to be done let's see um i i, I created a method to display the r, r2 score and i'm taking two data frames df1 and df2 let me take two data frames take the columns take the column respective column from the data frame common column which has been present in both the data frames categorically equal to false initially category i am making false and dfs equal to df1 comma df2 that means i am going to perform the concatenation here i concatenated df1 and df2 two data frames concatenation has been done and created a new data frame that is dfs then what i did if categorical if category if the data frame is having a category for df and dfs for df and dfs apply a loop label encoding actually what i need to do is i need to label encode see uh, this this technique is just creating a method and uh, you know if if you think sir this is a bit complex for us to understanding creating a method see the reason why i did uh, took uh, um, you know loop and all this stuff because the reason is see here there are many many values label encode you can do label encode one by one also you can do label encode one by one also just what you need to apply you need to write like this la le dot fit underscore transform column name so you know how many how many names are there sky is clear few few and this there are many names so you know it will took you it it, it will take you 20 25 lines it will take 20 25 lines to perform label encoding for each and every value and what label encode do sky is clear zero few clouds one scatter clouds two broken clouds three overcast clause 4 label encoding will label them some numerical value this is what we are going to perform this is what is been performed here just take take the column name and perform the label encoding of it so whatever the values which are present in that particular column it will convert them into 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 whatever be the unique values are there but if you write one by one okay if i do write one by it will take 25 lines Now here with the for loop it will not take 25 lines it will just in you know, one go just apply for loop and uh, it will it will perform the label encoding and then later on i'm going to uh, find r uh, see r2 score r2 score for it i'm going to take the uh, you know df column 1 and column 2 r2 score giving it as r2 and printing the r2 score for them okay so let's see what happened so this yeah so this uh, uh, both database are of uh, which uh, see whether one see whether two whether to whether and whether to okay whether data we are converting yeah yeah whether data because whether data is only having this category values not energy don't have the category correct no. correct okay so i need to convert this whether into some encoding so that's why i did uh, the operation for uh, same same operation for them okay and uh, yeah you are saying because there are five uh, city data for mm -hmm. each of the date and time mm -hmm. you are converting into a data frame no see actually uh, i am having uh, in this weather data i am having uh, these values related to the weather mean and correct, related correct. to the weather description okay so uh -huh. i need to convert them into numerics this is the task i need to do for every okay, city okay. for every city okay i need to convert okay. them see for the complete entire the reason is i can't use these these in my calculations correct, correct. yes Okay. okay so that is why uh, here i gave weather and weather 2 okay so you i hope i have already explained you weather and weather 2 this is your weather 2 in which you have reset your index and you have dropped the duplicates and this is your df weather here also you do the same thing same thing both are same both are same okay and here you are giving both of these values and converting weather description into label by label encoding converting weather main into label encoding and weather id okay here weather okay. id here, here sir weather id is not uh, you know here it's not categorical but i i will not take weather id as 801 802 and 809 no, no, i am not take i will take it as 01234 0, 0, okay so that is why I'm just converting into uh, label encode by using label encoding i will uh, taking them in that particular format and after taking the particular format let me calculate the r2 scores so r2 score for them is 0.9 0.963 and 0.921 this means that the data are better fitted okay I, as i told that if it is one if the r2 score is one then it is the best fitted uh, best fitted thing if r2 score is 0.9 obviously it is best 
okay so uh, here it is the best fitting uh, data okay and then we can drop the columns with qualitative weather information we can drop the columns with qualitative so weather mean weather id weather description weather icon drop them from the weather see we we converted them into label and then we drop them okay so weather main weather description weather id weather icon we dropped them so we did this much exercise and later on we dropped this much exercise we did and later on we dropped okay so now uh, this is qualitative weather information and uh, our analysis was uh, quantity okay so we are not going to consider them weather main weather id weather description weather icon so it's good to drop so from weather underscore df i've updated my this uh, data frame and i dropped these features then later what happened let me display the r square for all the column in the df underscore weather and df uh, underscore weather two so df weather columns equal to df underscore uh, weather dot column drop city name just drop the city name from it and assign all the column names to df underscore weather this is how you can assign all the column names uh, to a variable and then apply for loop for call in column weathers and just each and every column of df weather and df weather two and the column name just calculate the r score r square so here you can see that now the r square is perfect one so here in case of your r score is 0.9 that was not also a bad thing that was also not a bad not at all but 0.9 is also been good that means both the data frames both the data frames are exactly like quite similar only we did the same operation you can see we did the same operation here uh, let me let me show you this these are operations are same df weather reset drop or duplicate set time city name everything last but only the point is keep equal to last and this is keep equal to first okay keep last and keep first okay so i've taken time in the city as a subset okay and here i've taken uh, again the time and city as a subset but here i kept it as a first in case of weather and, re and uh, set the index to time here also set the index to the time but here it was keep equal to last and keep equal to first then uh, we did perform the drop duplicates that was a change and i found that we found that that categorical values can be dropped but in case of these values numerical values your r2 score is coming to be like one exactly one that means complete mapping of the values complete matching of the values okay so what will gonna happen next display the number of duplicates in df weather now let us uh, again print the number of duplicates now there are no duplicates available so initially initially we did duplicate checking of my data frame at initial point of view i did started my project and checking df dot du uh, duplicates duplicated dot sum i did for both the energy also and weather also and i found that okay only there was less duplicates but later on i did uh, managed with respect to the city i, I change uh, see there could be a city name and remaining all values will be same okay for example there are two cities the name of the cities are different but remaining all entries are same so it will not come under duplicate why because city name are different but what i did i converted the city name for example i did um, change the city name to the index and then if i do check what are the duplicates definitely it will gonna give me that there are duplicate values okay so i did some operations over the data frame and then i later i found that okay these are the duplicates all right now i removed all the duplicates from the weather all the columns except time and city name except time and city all duplicates are over now let us check check for the outlier also whether there are some there are some faulty entries present in my data set so i did check the outlier so df weather pressure so uh, you know uh, how to check the outlier box plots box plots are useful to check the outliers so very simple thing sns dot box plot and, and 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 put your column name inside the box plot that's it it will let you know that there are outliers so you can see that these points 
in, in pressure they are they are outliers so uh, if the question came sir how to find the outliers and how to check that they are outliers you can see that these points they are behaving anonymous these are outliers these are faulty entries which are present in your data set so in pressure there is an outlier so what to do what to do replace outliers with uh, with uh, replace outlier with nulls with nulls so what i did if i am having a pressure more than 1051 replace it with null value and if i am pressure less than 931 replace it with the null value okay this is the value which i set according to myself to replace the outliers okay replace them with the null values and then check for the df uh, df uh, whether pressure now now you can see that so all the values which will be uh, coming will be uh, you know this is the median you can see this is a box plot you can see that this is a box okay so uh, you know this center line is a median okay and uh, this this point is for q1 q2 q3 and uh, quartiles i did explain about this quartiles in my uh, se session also previous projects also in my classes also okay so on box plot you can check the uh, quartile quartile value so median is represented by uh, by q2 this is the 50 per 50% distribution or at the 50% uh, the value has been available so now you can see that previously if i it if i was making the box plot for the pressure it was looking like this and then when i was creating now after removing after replacing the uh, outlier with the null values i found that this is my plot same thing i did with the wind speed also with the wind speed see these are outliers these points which are which you can look like black no the, these points these are these are the outliers okay so what to do with these outliers if wind speed is greater than 50 replace it by none okay so whatever the values which are more than 50 they will be outlier and i am replacing them with one null values np dot null okay so here now you can check these are the outliers okay check for outliers in the width speed again so these are respectively the outliers you can see that these are the outlier points okay so fill the null values with interpolation and now what next we need to do see i can't keep them as in uh, uh, null okay i did replace by null but i can't keep them as a null because uh, i need to use those features um, ahead for my analysis so i can't keep the null so i uh, you know i perform interpolation okay so with the linear interpolation i replace these values with some some interpolated values so df under dot interpolate now in this complete data frame i use uh, linear interpolation so those values will be filled now split df either into five data frames D five data frames why with respect to the city because there are five cities so i am splitting my data frame on the basis of city so how to split a data frame on the basis of split uh, cities like this just name them df1 df2 df3 df4 df5 equal to x4 x in df whether group by city name okay and then you can split them into various cities and then uh, you know perform uh, after splitting your data set so there will be five five data frame will be created from df1 to df5 there will be five data frames created and then you are listing them this is a list okay preparing a list of uh, all uh, the values which are present in the data frame and assigning them into dfs assigning it into a new name that is a dfs this is what you did so uh, you know uh, what next merge all the data frames into the final data frame merge all the data frame into final data frame so uh, my df energy just assign it it to final okay so df energy was my final and for df and dfs okay that means these five these five for df and dfs df city name dot unique okay df city name dot unique what i need to do city string city string replace replace this uh, you know comma with uh, this thing with your square brackets okay replace this by no sorry uh, replace a square bracket with null this bracket with also with null replace empty spaces with uh, additional empty space with a single empty space and so on this is your this is your data cleaning 
दिस इज अ डेटा क्लीनिंग ओके सो इफ यू आर हैविंग अ कॉमा सॉरी नॉट अ कॉमा इफ यू आर हैविंग अ सिंगल कोट ओके रिप्लेस इट विद नथिंग If you are having a square bracket opening, replace with nothing. If you are having a uh, closing bracket, uh, then replace with nothing. And if you are having, uh, you know, this thing, uh, additional space, then also replace with the single space. This is what you need to do. Okay. So city name. If if in a city name, if these things are there, just replace with null. Okay. And then you need to add. You need to add them into uh, the final data frame, and you need to merge. Merge this data frame with the initial data frame df underscore final. This is how you are going to merge df underscore final dot merge df on time. How outer outer merge? See, you can't simply concat just add one data frame to another data frame. There are the if if you want to join the data frame also there is outer join inner join the concepts which you Uh, did learn in SQL same kind of joining because data frames are are in a form of a table and all the entries has been recorded in a table so you need to look out for these things how what is this outer join and uh, how we are going to perform the joining of or the merging here the method is merge okay no worries I can just simply also use merge okay but you know it will later gonna create an issues okay so what kind of join you are going to perform. This is what uh, uh, we uh, are going to uh, take care of. So outer join we are going to perform. This is how we are going to merge all the values df1, df2, df3, df4 one by one. We are going to join them, and then we are going to drop the city name. Okay, and that's it. So this is your uh, df underscore final, and these are the column names from generation of biomass till. All the values which are present in your weather also. So with this much analysis, I have joined your uh, your energy also and your weather also. So this much effort took from uh, you know from so much far we are performing analysis, and uh, later on we did join these two data frame, and now I am available with only one data frame that is DF final. So I assigned DF energy to the DF final. Then from all these data frames, whatever I did worked upon my weather thing. Okay, and uh, I, I just took unique cities which are available in the city one by one city. Okay, as per one by one city, I replaced uh, the cities uh, with the, if uh, there is a you know bracket and all this, I replaced with the empty spaces. And then finally I did merge and perform outer join over it. And this is my final final column names. These are finally. This is my final data. Okay, and again, I'm going to check whether there are null values or duplicated values in my final data frame or not. And I found that there are no null values and there are no duplicated values. If it happens, sir, you can join it directly, sir. Itna why why you did so much efforts and uh, this much code has been uh, took took place, sir. And then I see. I, I look, sir, initially told me, sir, uh, you drop these. Okay, you drop this. You drop this. Why, sir? You are having uh, so much uh, 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 null values, so that is why I, I told sir I am having so much null values. That is why I am dropping it. If I replace with zero, that is the uh, suggestion came. Okay, you can replace it with the zero. What happened after dropping this thing? Also, we have done lot of exercise. We resetted our index. We found whether now there are duplicate values or null values or not. Then uh, you know every time we keep on checking how many duplicate and null values are remaining, how many duplicate, how how many times, and we then perform resetting of the index. Check our observations that uh, whether right now we are having good values or not. So every time we are going to have an analysis of our data. If I join directly, if I don't drop, obviously your data set will be corrupted. Okay, and there will be no good analysis. So uh, you know, with this, whatever the exercise we did till to create one data frame only, final data frame, and now I have merged both of this weather also and your uh, uh, energy also, and I did check. Okay, there are no missing values and there are no duplicated values in my data set. Then later on, I plot the series. Okay, plot series. 
if I, I, I can plot the series for my various respective columns. So if I do talk about this uh, this uh, thing, plot uh, plot underscore series. What does this plot underscore series has been going to use? See, plot underscore series is used to make plots of the series data or the data frame. Okay, this is what it's going to help you. So I'm taking df underscore final data frame and I'm taking rain. Rain column. Okay, label I'm taking hourly. Okay, why label actual price? Okay, and title is rain in the last hour. Rain in the last hour. Okay, so the, here is the uh, uh, I'm just plotting the series for rain in the last hour for the complete data frame. Complete data frame. I'm not going to pick okay from this much time to that much time. Taking from 2015 first to the 2019 last. 2015 to 2019. Complete rain. Okay, on hourly basis, hourly basis. So this is how I got uh, the series plot. Similarly, I'm going to plot the series for rain 3h. So ye to hourly basis. This is was hourly one hour. Na? I did told when I was explaining my data, I told that okay, rain underscore one hour. That is hourly basis rain. This is your three hour basis rain. Rain uh, rain in the last three hours in mm millim uh, millimeters. Okay, so this is your three hours rain again series. I plotted the series for uh, rain rain column also. Okay, simple from taking df underscore final data frame. Now, if I do consider the, these these cities, all these five cities, if I do consider, I prepare the a list of these cities, and if I do uh, um, apply a for loop for it, okay, and I drop the column i drop the column rain 3h drop this column from final df okay just drop this column now what will happen i did the analysis i did the analysis for one hour also for three hour also and found a three hour you can see that what's happened with the three hour there was no three hour rain very very minimum very minimum so this kind of uh, series analysis for the three hour you can see that it's, it's completely blank basically <laughs> Sir, in this case, what is happening? There is the outlier, this middle one. Yeah, this is outlier. Actually. This need yeah. to be, hmm. this need to be removed, and hmm. this will matter as far as the electricity prices are concerned. Looking huh. at the last historical three hours, so then yeah. it is possible to predict what is the uh, expected your requirement of the electricity. Yeah, expected. So this is a relevant column and should not be dropped actually. Yeah, yeah, it will drop the accuracy. So, uh, you know, this Correct. three hours thing, this is actually an outlier. You can see that a very tall tower. Only one is having tall tower and remaining all the values are either null, they are very negligible or either they are having some values. Okay, and this is actually an outlier. Okay, so better what I did, what I did is finally drop this. Drop rain 3h. Okay, drop this rain 3h from all, all these cities. Okay, now, after dropping that, let, let me, uh, yeah, any any more thing. Okay, now the next thing is plot hourly actual electricity price along with the weekly rolling mean. Actual electricity price, plot the hourly actual price. Okay, so how to plot the actual price? See, rolling, rolling equal to DA final price actual, rolling that means every 24 hours. Rolling means just take every 24, uh, 24, 7, 24 hours in a week. Okay, and calculate the mean of it. So this is your rolling data. So from the actual price, take weekly, calculate the mean and plot the series. So DF final, I'm taking this data from DF final, actual price, label is hourly, Y is actual price, title hourly electricity price and a weekly rolling mean, okay, and just plotting it. Here is a plot, again from 2015 to 2019. And what I did, what I did? Rolling is something which I created. This variable I created from my end, and I did took for I did took for 24 hours, 24 hours and all the weeks. Okay, this is what I did took from my end. Okay, and uh, uh, and this is the variable which I created when I was plotting the series. When I was plotting the series. I did it took df final. So df final is the complete data frame. df final is the complete data frame. 
here here there is no parameter rolling i included did i included some somewhere rolling here did i included some rolling rolling is something which has been uh, calculated apart from this plotting series but i plotted the series for the df final actual price uh, hourly hourly basis and this is the title now here i plotted ax dot plot rolling here i plot so ax this value i did calculated from above and ax dot plot i did with the rolling and here you can see that here you can see if i haven't have uh, haven't in, uh, included the rolling portion here you can see this orange orange thing also see this orange orange data if i haven't included the rolling part okay and if i just simply do ax dot uh, you know plot um, so uh, it will not be in uh, there but uh, this is your average okay 24/7 average and these are uh, you know hourly hourly actual price hourly actual price fluctuations and this is the mean price okay this is the average price okay so i calculated for the average price mean mean price and then i plotted for the complete price and in aur isko maine kya kar diya ye jo ye rolling tha this value rolling i incorporated this rolling into my actual prices with the mean values so you know here whatever be the mean values are there that will be shown by the orange okay the mean values are shown by the orange hourly basis so these are actual uh, you know uh, hourly uh, electric prices and weekly rolling mean so both has been shown here in one graph itself so here i calculate the mean of the actual price okay for on on weekly basis weekly basis and then here i plotted the actual price so yadi if i haven't doing this rolling so that will be simple this blue plot but i incorporated this rolling portion also here orange that is the mean price what happened next plot the electricity price monthly frequency along its first year lagged series see monthly monthly see monthly price so uh, price actual i am going to take it as a monthly and again i plotted the series plotted the series for on the basis of month on the basis of month i am taking the data on monthly basis okay so you are available with how many uh, columns are there do you have any month column available do you have any uh, date column available here you can see these are all the columns and do you have any date thing here is that uh, anything date from which you can pick up the month and then you can plot is there any chances see this is your final final columns and in this final column you have dropped one rain 3h uh, rain 3h and uh, you have dropped one uh, column that is uh, bilbao this is what you have already dropped okay now the thing is i am going to talk about i am going to talk about the price actual on the basis of monthly frequency as frequency m monthly frequency so you have on your index on your index obviously you are having date you are not having index in the form of 0 1 2 3 4 this is time series analysis so on your index there is a dates from 2015 1 to 2019 so this is your index so on the basis of now from there you are picking the month okay so monthly price okay price actual on the basis of monthly okay and then series equal to monthly price just uh, see here plot series can either take the complete data frame also and it can take the series also no worries so here i am going to give the series monthly price i am not creating any this uh, any i am put giving any data frame i'm giving the series so here this is a monthly price okay on y axis i'm taking the price title giving the monthly frequency okay and uh, then there is a shift of 12 shifting of 12 i shifted 12 why sh there is a shift of 12 shift of 12 means 12 months okay 12 months that means one year lag ki if this year was this one what was the previous year so there is a lag okay one year lagging price so i uh, just having the comparison with the one year lag okay so there is a shift of 12 and uh, this is called as a shifted so df final price dot as frequency m shift of 12 okay that means 12 months lag 
okay or i would say one one year lag okay and then draw the hourly hourly price actual on a monthly basis so here is a plot here you can see the plot for actual price and one year lag actual price so what was the previous year actual price and what was the current year actual price on that particular month okay this is what been uh, uh, you know has been plotted and you can see the what are the fluctuations related to it so i have drawn the actual price actual price for the uh, hourly basis on the basis of uh, uh, see hourly will always be there hourly will always be there here i did on weekly rolling week and here i did took for the month previously i did analysis for the weeks and now here i did analysis for the month and i did given a lag the lag was given just to incorporate previous year also okay for the previous year actual price and the new year actual price then actual electricity price on daily weekly scale daily daily weekly scale what does this daily weekly scale mean see let's see plot the series for df final price actual this is what i'm going to work for label uh, hourly basis actual price on y label i'm going to give start from 1 plus 2 24 into 500 and at, uh, end at 1 plus 24 into 515 so what does this 500 and 500 and 515 uh, uh, means what does this mean that is on that is for that is for what 1 hour 1 plus 24 into 500 what does this mean 1 plus 24 into 500 and 1 plus 24 into 515 daily weekly scale obviously 15 is obviously for the two weeks this is what we are going to do actual hourly electricity price so one is the hour every hour 24 hours are there and where we are going to take for the 500 what is this 500 into 515 why we are going to take this for what is 500 500 and 515 see 15 that means two weeks this is what we understood one means one hour we are going to start from 1 plus 24 into 500 and end with 1 plus 24 into 515 why this 500 uh, 500 we are going to take what happened here above also and here also what do you think why i have taken this particular uh, starting and ending values 500 and 515 का लॉजिक समझ में नहीं आया हां दैट्स व्हाट दैट्स व्हाट आई एम आस्किंग व्हाई दिस इज 500 एंड 515 आई हैव बीन टेकिंग प्लॉटिंग द एक्चुअल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्राइस एट अ डेली वीकली स्केल प्लॉटिंग फॉर द टू वीक्स फॉर द टू वीक्स व्हाट इज मेगावाट आवर एंड इज देयर एनी जस्टिफाइड वैल्यूज द ओके 500 इज अ मेगावाट आवर दिस इज व्हाट बीन इनिश इनिशियल थिंग एंड आई एम गोइंग टू टेक स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम दिस मच प्राइस टू फॉर टू दैट मच स्टार्टिंग एंड द एंडिंग दिस इज व्हाट आई एम बीन आइदर आई एम पुटिंग दिस एज अ रेफरेंस व्हाट डू यू थिंक आइदर इट इज एज अ रेफरेंस और व्हाट सो just picking from 1 24 okay 24 hours one hour one hour slot and i'm for two weeks i'm taking 24 into 515 this is what i'm going to take zoom for the two weeks this is actual hourly price electricity price price data which has been calculated here created the series for the actual price you are creating a series of 500 data hmm May 500 right? 500 500 days 500 days okay for the 500 days but it should any, be 65 okay it it, be, if it if you are taking say uh, hmm. uh, weekly hmm. then it is to be accordingly 52 52 weeks actually okay 52 weeks it sh it should have to be 52 weeks so why here 500 has been yeah. mentioned what what could be the reason 500 has been mentioned and from 500 to 515 what 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 could be the uh, thing because we are having the years from 2015 to 2019 okay and we need to predict the actual electricity price on daily and the weekly scale 
on a daily basis and the weekly uh, basis so on, if i do take on a daily basis so there should be 365 the point has been uh, correct 365 days 24 hours okay and one an hour one one hour each slot okay so instead of 500 we should have been used 365 that should be uh, the correct uh, assumption but here they used the uh, use is 500 and if i am using 365 also why should i add 15 here why should we add 15 are yeah. you considering randomly the day number 500 to day number 550 see uh, any a, any anything uh, any anything has been considered any two slots any two 15 days any two 15 days from my data set okay any two 15 15 days from my data set okay so here you can see that if i do started with the two it's it was not like that okay 216 515 2 200 2016 see 2016 this is the year 2016 515 that is fifth month and the 15 date and i am considering till 14 days of 216 216 529 okay so if this has been present at any of the 500 500 row okay if this is 500 row so i am just considering the next 5 uh, 15 more rows and i am just considering that this is the two two weeks i hope this makes a sense now if this has been present at some 500 uh, position to 2016 5 uh, 15 can you can you see i am i am uh, uh, you know putting my marker here my cursor here i am running my cursor here 2016 5 15 can you see this and after just 14 days 2016 529 and my complete data set is from 2015 to 2019 so out of them i am just taking 500 row and just considering more plus 15 two weeks from that particular okay and you can change the values and you can check how it is going to impact on your graph is that okay i think is uh, is that okay or do you have any anything in your mind you can put a change here okay instead of 500 you can put 365 and plus 15 that will be 380 and you can check what what figures are coming here in the plots what dates are coming okay so i'm starting date is uh, from the 500 value till uh, uh, till plus plus 14 14 days more is that okay that's why i have taken according to the time series that's what i have taken starting is from 500 and uh, 515 is the next okay okay so you can change the values from your side and check what what dates are coming here then now uh, you are able to understand now the next thing is if i go, going to draw the the percentage of hourly change in the actual electricity price okay now uh, percentage change in the actual uh, electricity uh, price so what to do actual price and uh, divide this divide the act energy actual shift it by one position and then multiply by the 100 okay df energy actual price the actual price which is given in the energy divided with uh, divide the actual energy actual price uh, shift it to one okay shift it to one divide it and then multiply by 100 okay and then plot the series of it okay so what you are having df energy actual price this is actual price dot divide df energy actual price shift to one that means you need to shift by one decimal point and then whatever the values you are going to get multiplied by 100 this is the change and then we are going to plot the series for it the percentage of the hourly change in the actual electricity prices okay so the percentage of hourly change in the actual electricity price has been mentioned like this so div div actually it's a floor division basically floor division okay so uh, percentage i just going to calculate the percentage of hourly change in the actual price so uh, that is why this change has been uh, calculated by uh, this is the actual price dot div that is the division floor division df energy i to took shift it by one there is a shift uh, in one one point one decimal point so i divided this by uh, you know uh, uh, this thing and multiplied by 100 and this is what you are getting okay hourly change actual price then actual price i plotted the histogram okay i did plotted the histogram for the actual uh, electricity price here is a histogram 
for it okay simple simple histogram i did plot it and then i decomposed the electricity into time series very much important very very much important this is what the time series analysis used to do decompose and you have done the seasonal decompose okay seasonal decompose there is a method which is in a, this is a method available in your uh, statistic time series analysis seasonal decompose so i'm seasonal decompose price actual and model i'm going to take is additive okay so you know time series decomposition is a process of separating time series data into core components this is what you are going to do core components and these core components are trend seasonality and residual these three are the core components if we do talk about the trend trend is a rise or fall in the mean if i do talk about seasonal it is a recurring re re seasonal is a recurring cycle repetition and remaining is a residual whatever comes at the last that is the residual so i'm dividing my complete data into time series analysis into various components i'm going to divide okay so uh, basically the decomposition takes place to divide uh, the complete thing into four components okay in trends seasonality residual these are the basic things okay trends and seasonals are um, uh, not always present in the time data time dependent data okay but residual is something which is left over okay so uh, here i am going to take uh, this thing as in uh, time series decomposition and we can check check it out at what you are going to get uh, four okay four four i have already told that divided into four components okay and uh, these components are the first one is observed this is your observed component okay then the next one is a trend the next one is a residual and the last one is a seasonal these are the four components in which a time series can be decomposed okay and very much important for a time series analysis so these all have some meaning observed trend residual and the seasonal and did told you about that if it if I, if i say that the components uh, time series uh, components as i told trend is something increasing mean okay it's related to your uh, increasing mean seasonality is something it's a cycle it's a repetition it's a pattern which is going to follow okay so trend is increasing or decreasing values in the series okay how much values are been increased or decreased this is the trend and hum hamesha bolte hain we always say what is the trend what is the trend of the price so trend of the price actual price has been shown with the help of a trend whether the price actual price is going to increase or whether the actual price is going to decrease so this has been represented with the help of a trend and seasonality is going to tell you that uh, a repetition how much um, you know it, it, it's it is represented in the form of cycles how this trend is going to repeat in how much how, how many cycles okay that this trend is going to occur again okay so uh, you know the, this is the explanation related to your trend and residual is a leftover data it's a left leftover so seasonal is a repetition residual is a leftover trend is obviously it's a trend and this is observed this is how the actual observation has been uh, okay this is what is observed okay and this is how the trend analysis this is your seasonal analysis and this is your residual and residual i guess here there is nothing available in the residual okay similarly i perform the seasonal decomposition of price actual uh, decompose the log electricity prime uh, time series log electricity i calculate the log okay log log logarithm logarithm of your actual price and again drawn the same plots again drawn the same plots for it so previously there was no log log uh, value for the actual price that was a simple uh, thing now here i calculated the np dot log log run the function i have used here for the actual price and again plotted the same thing observed trend residual and the seasonal these are the time series plots for it okay now uh, now the point is just perform some uh, some uh, hypothesis testing i already used this adf and all these uh, things into my uh, data data uh, okay and these libraries i have already used so y equal to df final price actual so price actual is something which i need to perform the prediction regression analysis this is what i need to do so take price actual on y axis okay and then perform the test regression test regression equal to c just add fuller that means hypothesis testing i need to do okay so here uh, you know what is the p value came 
number of lakhs 50 critical value 1 percent 5 percent 10 percent so this is the hypothesis testing which has been done by the adf algorithm over your price actual okay now the question came sir what is the working of adf okay can you please explain the complete algorithm which has been used by the adf so again this is something uh, you know, which can't be explained in just you know this much amount of time okay but i did told you uh, in uh, prior also when i was including these libraries okay for the hypothesis testing this is adf that is augmented dicky fuller test for the hypothesis testing so it has a significant uh, sig uh, statistical significant test which means that this test will give the hypothesis results whether we are having a null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis so obviously you are having some data and accordingly you are uh, applying uh, a test over that particular data and uh, you know you are going to check out for the results and the results which we are going to apply on this hypothesis test is the stationarity whether your time series is stationary or whether your time series is not stationary okay two things which we are going to um, see this could be the question you can answer why you are applying this hypothesis testing stationary whether my time series is stationary or whether my time series is not stationary okay so with the help of the basic uh, basis of the components which we have seen above in our code that there are four components and trend and seasonality these, these are going to let you know that whether your time series is consistent or whether your time series is not consistent secondly with the help of hypothesis testing i'm going to check whether your uh, time series related to the actual price is being stationary or whether it is going to be not stationary so i request you from my end kindly go through these concepts very much important if you are working on a time series analysis how hypothesis because in normal data hypothesis uh, testing is uh, p values and there are different other techniques for uh, uh, hypothesis testing normal data but for the time series these are specific okay so i applied hypothesis testing with the adf i did apply hypothesis testing with kpss and i did uh, you know after that after that after the hypothesis testing i plot the auto correlation and the partial correlation plots okay and i already told you about these things also auto correlation and the partial correlation when i was including my uh, libraries auto correlation and the partial correlation what i told uh, you there related to it i have used acf and pscf i hope you remember these things okay and auto correlation is to find the correlation uh, finding correlation between the data points which are available in your time series okay and partial correlation is same finding the correlation for the data points which are available in your time series but it is partial not the complete thing okay and here i have plotted the same okay plot acf and plot pscf for the actual price okay so this is the correlation this is the auto correlation this is the partial correlation okay and then uh, here is the cross correlation df final load uh, load total load actual and the price actual this is the cross correlation between these two okay that means a comparative plot for for these two the total load total actual load and the actual price actual total load and the price ccf okay sir you need to split yeah split recording recording yes. okay okay one hour okay okay